Welcome to the Go Electric Fleet Show. This is where we sit down and chat about EV fleets, infrastructure, and more. Join us as we explore EV fleets here in BC. Hi, I'm Sam Starr. I'm the manager of fleet decarbonization at BC Emergency Health Services. My role is developing the strategy and implementing decarbonization and sustainability efforts across our ambulance and support fleet and driving the sustainability across the organization. So we are here in Burnaby, BC at our station 240. Uh, this is our largest or one of the largest stations we have here in, uh, in Metro Vancouver. We have 182 stations across the province. My focus is, is building that and, and implementing that strategy around decarbonization, uh, decarbonization for the fleet. And it's not just to focus on electrification. In okay. fact, a key part of this is optimizing how we, how we operate, as well as right-sizing our vehicles appropriately, including ex expanding the use of bikes and eventually e-bikes. So bikes, for example, are important for us because we, we do a lot of works at, plan, at, at planned events. Yeah. Uh, we are at Canucks games, we're at uh, we're at soccer games, yeah, Whitecaps games. Uh, we will be able, we will be involved in FIFA, for example, when it okay. comes here to Vancouver yep. in 2026. Yep. So having a clean fleet, or at least a section of our fleet that is that is fully electric, uh, as well as mobile and e-bikes, for example, and, and bikes, will is a good way of demonstrating our dedication towards driving sustainability in the organization. And that's a lot of where I'm looking at how ways we can figure out how to how to optimize that and. Okay. and and that's what I, we built our clean fleet strategy around. Yeah, is dry, is is that sort of optimize, right size, electrify. Awesome focus. clean fleet strategy. Yeah. great way to get into it. Right, yes. have that piloting document, sort of forward uh, forward thinking approach. So, like, what uh, series of years are you guys planning for uh, at this time? Like, is it a five or is it a ten year horizon? So we've really actually built two sort of strategies. We, we start with the with more of a sustainability and decarbonization uh, organization-wide strategy, and then we focus, and then I then we built one around the fleet. So the yeah. organization-wide strategy is looking at what's it going to take to get from here to 2040, 2050, and how are we going to really like wh wh what are we going to put in place in order to really move the needle uh, culturally as well as uh, technically with the fleet uh, to to get our 650 ambulances. 200 plus uh, support fleet, support vehicles. I mean, we're getting close to actually, we're actually rapidly getting close to a thousand vehicles yeah. across our fleet, uh, and being able to uh, and, and having a, a, a guiding strategy for that is key. Yeah. The clean fleet strategy, which is a more technical document, is actually more focused on a five-year plan, and okay. that's and figuring out what is it going to take to reach the cl the clean BC goals that are mandated to the public sector organizations of reducing our emissions by 40%. We, we started this journey quite a while back before I even joined, before I joined the organization. And right, we have 70 um, hybrid interceptors, Ford interceptors that are out there that our supervisors use. And they've put over 3.2 3 million kilometers on, wow. on them so yep. far to date, which has also helped us sort of start going down this, going down this uh, path. Yep. Additionally, the mach -E's that you see uh, we have over 350,000 kilometers on, on a fleet of about 18 between, between Mach-E's and a couple Ford Transits and a F-150 Lightning. We've been really starting to move the needle on and accelerate uh, yeah. the amount of kilometers we're putting on that are electric. When it comes to risks and cha uh, to, to challenges and risks, uh, uh, the big one is, is, I find, is around uh, gaining user acceptance. Getting the, getting the right resource in the vehicle and happy because uh, there's a lot of these, especially on the sport fleet, they're in these cars all day long. These yeah. are these cars, these vehicles are their offices. We need to make sure they are well equipped. We need to also, you know, make sure things are standardized to an extent yeah. as we look to scale this. Yeah. And we are always exploring new platforms. So the Mach-E's, for example, is our first real platform that we get, get a chance to really start working with, uh, which we got during during COVID. Um, so now, as we move out of COVID and more platforms become available. We are looking for looking at other options for a sport cool. fleet, so we can yeah. find a more a scalable platform. So here's your Mackie -E Ford. So we have, about, I think we have 16 of 16? these. 16, yeah, yeah, 16 of these. So this is one that's set up as a paramedic response unit, or, or just a responder unit. Yeah. And equipped with lights and sirens, as well as we have our computer system for dispatching. Yeah. We have, you know, we have to re re redo the center consoles. So all this is. 
designed to make this is this is a paramedic's workstation during the day. Okay. And yeah. trying to make this as comfortable as possible and as and as functional as possible. So yeah. you see the various upfits that we have that we have put in here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really exciting to be able to take to get an electric vehicle like this and get it in service as a paramedic responder unit yeah. and demonstrate that this can be done as a big part of what we're also looking to do in the future is getting more of our for low acuity care as well, getting okay. more EVs and yeah. more, more vehicles so we don't always have to be res responding with an ambulance, for example. We're actually running some of the smallest ambulances in, across North America. A lot of North American ambulance services happen to use larger they're, vehicles. They're bigger. They're wow. bigger vehicles. Big they, like, they like the bigger yeah. chassis. They like yeah. the heavier duty chassis. Some of them, you, you can see some of them on the international Freightliner okay. chassis. Yep. I mean, those are usually, the, the, I mean, that's just the nature of the business. We are also one of the few, we actually have one of the largest fleets in North America as we are one of the few provincial wide ambulance services that, that's out there. Yeah. So, it's a really big challenge to figure out how to how to solve for the, for these six. You know, how are we going to get to six hundred to, to really decarbonize all or sorry, electrify all six hundred fifty ambulances across the province and all our support vehicles? So finding the scalable platform, finding something we can work with, getting the infrastructure in place. That's the other big one is making sure we, you know, getting that infrastructure that does take time. Yeah. I know it's a I, I understand it's a challenge for everybody. Mm -hmm. All of my colleagues uh, in, in, in this business are. Uh, are challenged with that. Uh, so, you know, we're trying to work our way to get through the process for a pilot, hopefully by the end of, ne uh, by the end of this year, that we can then learn, learn from, use as a sandbox to figure out how we can then scale and, and ultimately build a framework that allows us to really move forward in accelerating electric ambulances. Yeah. So we are exploring a variety of ways uh, with the ambulances. We're looking at everything from driver training, so ways to currently reduce emissions in our current, ve in our current vehicle fleet, we're also soon to be launching a new platform that you'll see hopefully in the next few months. It's on a Ford Transit platform. Okay. Yeah. So um, just a standard ICE, but that should hopefully reduce, emis reduce emissions and improve fuel economy by about 20% wow. is our yeah. hope it's compared to these uh, yeah. 6.6 liter V8s that we run in these Chevy yeah. ambulances. So that's gonna be a nice start for us as we start to roll those out as part of our replacement cycle. So we're trying to do little baby steps along the way, essentially, yep. that will start peeling away at, at, the, at, at the emissions and, and at our fuel usage. And all of that's gonna really help drive a reduction in operating costs. So right now we don't have a true unified telematics platform. That's something we are working on, um, is, a, is a priority of ours. But we are, we have, we do work, we have been trialing and working with a, a variety of different of the telematics platforms. Yep. Ambulances in of, the, in, in of themselves also have a sort of built-in system in the back uh, that is, that controls all the electronics. Yep. Uh, and those systems also can now provide forms of telematics. We also have our own systems that connect to dispatch. So there's a variety of systems running on any ambulance. It's, it's a quite a complex set of set of telecom and and uh, another and another electrical equipment just to make sure that everything is powered properly yep. and functioning in, in the back of the in in the ambulances themselves. Well, this is this is sort of the heart of the ambulance conversion. And to your question about the plug-ins, we have one for the conversion battery. Okay. That is that is for powering the 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 patient compartment yeah. as well as a patient compartment heater so yeah. this is this is directly connected to to a, to a heater that when it's cold out we you know there are plugs available at various hospitals okay. as well as all of our stations for the vehicle to be plugged in and the patient compartment to be kept warm or maintained at the right temperature to ensure that we can deliver quality patient care. So when we talk about the complexity of, of the electronics that have to go on, that have to work in here and all that, I, as you can see, there's a lot of electrical equipment. Some of it's not actually in at this very moment. Um, but yeah, it's a very, there's a lot going on in the back of these, in these patient compartments. Everything here is mission critical yeah. and making sure that everything is working properly and functioning properly is key and that is one of the bigger complexities when it comes to electrification of these vehicles, yeah. whether that be through conversions or even finding the right electric chassis that we could work off of, platform that we could work off of to move it moving forward. Actually looking and taking that analysis, taking that data and 
imagining that that vehicle is actually an electric vehicle, yeah. we've been able to do some modeling to figure out what chargers and what level chargers we're going to need, yeah. and you know, prox and be able to adjust things like what is the battery efficiency, what is the battery size, is this going to work in our regular duty cycle, yeah. and at, if so, at what points are, can they charge? And actually, a big part of this is working with this not just internally and making sure we have chargers at our stations, but working with our hosp with hospitals as well. Yeah. That's really oh, critical. Yeah, sure, they, you've I, got some dwell yes. time there. Yeah. yeah, actually there's quite a bit of dwell time between yeah. our hospitals and our stations, and it's actually key as part of our sort of always be charging approach to make sure that the crews, whenever they get, and get when, when we will deploy EV ambulances, will be able to charge at not just the station, but the hospital, yeah. because they're gonna, every electron counts, yeah. And being able to have you know the 30, 40 minutes that they may be there doing an offload at the hospital, that that energy that we can capture during that time uh, is critical. And yeah. you know one of the things that we found out of the, with all this modeling has been that we don't need to go level three chargers. You know, yeah. I, I, I know a lot of people say, oh, we're emergency services. Oh, you should go, you should be going. You know, yeah. you need DC fast chargers. Actually, we don't think we do. Yeah. And we've seen, and we, we we've heard from some of our colleagues abroad uh, that. They also are not necessarily relying, they're not relying on DC fast chargers, yeah. they're relying on more high power level tubes. Yeah. And that gives that, between that, between that the station and the hospital, that provides them the confidence that their crews will need. So all these things, looking at that, the, that depth of data and a variety of simulations and variety of duty cycles that we get off of our telematics systems that we do have right, right yeah. now, has been incredibly useful. And, yeah. we're, and we keep, I, I, I get data basically every day and I'm also looking at you know, what is it going to take even further down the line to get to, you know, uh, remote and rural areas? Yeah. Like, I know we're well, we're well off from electrifying those, but the hope is that there's things like plug-in hybrid, uh, plug hybrids and other solutions that are going to be out there that we can really utilize and ultimately deploy in, in our network. I think an important thing to add to is one of the things that we are looking at doing is adding battery energy storage systems as well. Yeah. That is a key piece to making not only our infrastructure a bit more turnkey, yeah. but also giving us operational redundancy. Yeah. And th it's something that right now, in the case there's a blackout, for yeah. example, you know, it's, you, your fuel pumps may not work, right? Yeah. All those types totally. of things can yeah. happen, right? Yeah. So, the advantage of having, you know, being able to deploy an EV with the battery energy storage system means we can charge that, we can charge that ambulance yep. in the case that there is any issue. Yep. So being able to have that, um, that operational redundancy is critical actually to our, to our deployments and actually adds an extra layer of protection on top of what we're doing today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates on fleet electrification and other sustainable transportation solutions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Go Electric Fleet Show.